All right, so in this video, we're gonna wrap up some of the questions and comments for Blender Fast Track Volume 1. So again, thank you guys all for your questions and comments. I just want to reiterate that there, there's a ton of comments. So we're going to focus on the questions that are going to benefit the majority of people. There was a lot of very specific questions. In the meantime, if you haven't posted your work on Instagram, I would love to see it. I'm going to be doing a critique video in the coming weeks. Hashtag it with CG Fast Track and then put a comment at CG Fast Track, please critique me. We're going to try to critique as much as possible and we're going to prioritize those who post early. So next question is, do I ever light with negative values to deepen shadows in areas of your scene? Short answer is no. I find that that workflow ends up with a very unnatural lighting result. I'm going to have more videos on lighting in the future, but long story short, I use what's called a gobo and essentially a gobo is just something in your scene that is generating shadows. So for example, in part three of Blender Fast Track, we used rocks as gobos to darken areas of our scenes. So I, I use that workflow all over the place. Um, with forests, with caves, cities, all of those things. So next question is why use Blender even though you can use Maya or Houdini? So the best analogy that I can apply to this question is sometimes when you travel, you wanna use a plane. Sometimes you wanna use a car. Sometimes it's better just to walk. And Maya is like a plane. You can get a lot of people going to certain places in a very consistent way in a very short amount of time. Houdini is closer to like a tank, an army tank. You can blow stuff up, it has a ton of gadgets, but generally speaking, it's gonna be pretty slow to actually get stuff done in. Blender is actually closer to what I would consider to be a Swiss army knife, where it's really simple. There's not a lot of stuff in your way when you just wanna do some basic modeling and texturing. And Blender does have some areas that are kind of much, much further ahead than Maya and Houdini both. For example, Eevee, the real-time render. So that's an area that Blender is actually much further ahead than Maya and Houdini both. Also modeling, I actually prefer modeling in Blender compared to Maya. Maya doesn't really have a good non-destructive modeling workflow. It's got a history stack, but it doesn't come anywhere near to Blender's workflow with the modifier stack. Um, Houdini, I don't like working with Houdini's viewport at all. Um, it's gotten better over the years, but overall it's just really clunky. Whereas Blender's and Maya viewports are very quick and it's very organic. So I wouldn't want to model in Houdini. So long story short, I love to use Blender for just basic stuff. So this is a good question for uh, those that don't have a good computer. The question is here is, dev and rendered mode in the viewport are too slow for their computers. What we can we do to optimize this? So what's happening here, when we actually switch to rendered mode, we are actually rendering this entire frame, which is actually pretty big. And we're doing it in a, in a way that is trying to do real time rendering. So when I rotate this around, it's gonna update automatically, which is actually a very expensive calculation. So for those of you that have a slower computer, what I would recommend doing is just stay in shaded mode. Don't go into look dev or a viewport shading mode. And what you wanna do is go into your camera. So you can just come in here uh, lock view, uh, lock camera to view. I'll jump into my camera and I'll just rotate around like this. And whatever I wanna see the actual render, I'll just do render, render image. And then from here, if this is still too slow, what you can do is just go into your um, output settings and just do something lower, something like 960 by 540, which will be 16 by nine. So now when I do render image, it still gives me the render, but it's a much, much smaller render, uh, resolution. So the amount of pixels that you render here are going to directly increase the time it's gonna render. So now if I wanna kinda tweak my scene or tweak my shaders, all I have to do is tweak it so I can go to like my light right here. I can go into my properties. I can go up on this, so something like 5,000. And then when I'm ready to see what I'm doing, I can just do the render, render image. And this might seem kind of like a pain in the butt, like it's like you're taking forever to see what you're doing, but this is actually a pretty standard workflow, um, especially when you get into like larger scenes. Viewport rendering didn't actually become a thing up until the last few years. 
So that should help speed things up dramatically for you. Okay, so next question we have here is, how can we learn and practice CG related stuff besides a computer? So you basically have two areas that you want to focus on. You wanna focus on building your technical skills, which is actually learning the software. And then you have your artistic skills, which can be developed in a number of ways. You can learn the artistic stuff in uh, any kind of medium. So painting, sketching, I would recommend starting with photography. So essentially as 3D artists, essentially all we're really doing is creating a digital photo. So photography is a very easy thing to pick up and it'll get you experience with working with composition and lighting. So I'd recommend starting there. So the question is here, how do you learn to do sound design and sound effects like in the intro to CG Fast Track? I personally, I'm not a, a big sound effects guy. I appreciate the kind words for the work that I did in the intro. Uh, a lot of the credit has to go to Video Copilot, which is where I got a lot of the sound effects. And honestly, how I designed that out was really, I just went online and looked at a ton of references. I looked at Transformers. I looked at a bunch of different commercials. And I just kind of like took inspiration from them. And I just spent hours and hours and hours digging through the Video Copilot library to find things that kind of match and I just kind of experimented. That's the kind of like best direction I can give you. Again, that, that's not really what I do. I just I just kind of played around until it sounded good. And he asks, do you recommend learning this aspect too or looking for someone experience in there to help you with it? I would recommend experimenting with it as much as possible. For me, when I got started, I started as editing. I dabbled in 3Ds, doing intros and titles and that kind of stuff. And it was a great exploration process. But as you get more serious, and if you decide that this is something that you want to do, I would start to, but as you get more serious and as you start to build like a portfolio and a demo reel, I would start to specialize in any specific area. So next question we have here is, do you have to know everything or something specific? So I'm going to answer the question as if you're asking if you want to get a job, do you have to learn everything or do you have to just know certain areas and the answer is you should have a good general knowledge of the entire process just the basics and the fundamentals but as you progress you'll slowly start to learn that you like specific areas and those are the areas that you want to start specializing in so generally speaking studios hire specialists or generalists and a specialist is someone who's going to be good at one or two areas and a generalist is someone who's kind of good at everything or someone who's multi-specialized and this specialty of yours can change over time. So for like me, when I started, my specialty was compositing. And then that moved into lighting and that moved into effects work and so on and so forth. So even though you pick a specialty now to build a demo reel over, you can change that over time. Next question we have here is, do you think it's necessary to go to art school and have an art degree to be a good artist of pro level? So short answer is no, you don't have to go to school. It's not a requirement for you to work in the industry to have a good degree. Long answer, it's complicated. So schools give you a lot more than just education. Uh, one of the biggest areas that they give you is a community. For example, it's hard to build a network of people that you know working from just your computer alone. I'm gonna make a bigger video on this topic in the future, but long story short, I've never worked at a studio where I didn't see a ton of people that didn't actually have an art degree, and I've never worked at a studio where they required it. Even when I see it on job ads and I know those studios, I know that they are, they'll they still hire people without degrees. The most important thing is that you're gonna work well with people and that you have a good demo reel. Next question we have here is, in the future, is there any chance by having a good knowledge in Blender would that get you a job? Uh, the short answer is yeah, there are plenty of studios using Blender. It's not industry standard. It's not used a lot, but for example, recently I've been contacted by three different studios in Los Angeles looking to hire me for doing Blender art, Blender work. Um, that's really rare. I don't usually get that, but with Blender 2.8 being more standardized in the way it functions, it's slowly kind of catching on. And I've seen plenty of people in the studios already using Blender. I don't see a lot of studios wrapping their entire uh, pipeline. In fact, I don't know any studio that wrapped their entire pipeline around Blender. But for a modeler or a texture artist or basic sculpting, those are all fine things to do in Blender in a studio environment. But you don't just have to know Blender, you have to be a good artist as well. So I would say focus on building your demo reel. Don't focus too much on learning all the software, focus on making good projects and then start to branch out from there. The next question we have here is, what do you think about the nearest future of Blender in production? I heard that Epic is funding Blender. What do you think about that? So Blender, I, I see it being used already. It's not like dominating. It's not like 
10% of the industry is using Blender by any means, but there is a small amount of people that I have seen and have worked with that use Blender for simple tasks like modeling, texturing. As Blender grows, I think that it'll be more and more common for modelers and texture artists to use it. I don't think we're anywhere near uh, animation, scene assembly, lighting, and the core of the production pipeline being done in Blender. I think if anything, the industry is actually moving towards Houdini for scene assembly and lighting. But yeah, if you were to jump into production and you asked to get Blender just to model stuff in, I'm sure most studios would not have a problem with that. Next question is, where do I start doing my portfolio? Is RStation okay? Yes, RStation is a great place to start. My recommendations moving forward would be to try to post as much as possible, post on a consistent basis, try to do it maybe once a week or once every two weeks, and build a very consistent portfolio for yourself. So if you're into 3D modeling texturing, build a portfolio over 3D modeling. If you're into environments, build a portfolio on environments. If you're, if you're into characters, build a portfolio for characters. Try to be as consistent as possible. So this question is, why aren't you using 60 frames per second in 2019? So that's a great question. 60 frames per second is typically more for real time, more for if you're playing video games. The standard for anything cinematic, so feature films, things like that, is still 24 frames per second. Why is this the case? Long story short, you know, if you check out like the movies like The Hobbit, the Hobbit was actually done at 48 frames per second, and it was released in theaters that way as well. And essentially, the community, you know, didn't like it. You know, the people going to see it, the the vast majority of them didn't like the 48 frames, 48 frames per second. And there's a couple different reasons why I would say this is is one, the more frame rates you have, the more detailed you see. Therefore, all the props and stuff that we use on set in the renders that we do they actually don't actually hold up to be 60 frames per second. So the quality would just need to go through the roof to be able to pull that off. On top of that, we're just kind of used to films being 24 frames per second. That's just what we, as people that watch movies, perceive as being cinematic and anything different from that is just kind of jarring. So long story short, I use 24 frames per second just to make it more cinematic. So the question is here is the V value on the stencil markings is not increasing more than one. Why is that? So what he's talking about here is in the Rooney mission. If we go to say the highlight here, we boom this up. If you kind of come here and your V value isn't actually going above one, you might have to actually type this in manually. So um, that this is a little wonky. We ran into that with uh, in the tutorial, but just you might need to actually type in the value manually. So this is not a question. This is another tip. The tip is if you're on your Minecraft project, if you run into an issue where your camera can't actually see the scene. It might be actually a clipping plane issue. So I'll show you guys what that means. So I have my camera here and if I zoom out far enough, what will happen is you'll notice that actually everything disappears. And if I render this, nothing will actually show up. So what you have to actually do is go into your camera properties and then go into your clip start and clip end. So this is your clipping plane. Just go ahead and increase that to something higher than what it is. So the question here is, is it easier to work in Blender with a keyboard, with a number pad, or a three mouse button, or can it be done just as well with a drawing tablet, no number pad, Apple keyboard, trackpad, and mouse? Basically, what is the best and easiest way to get work working in Blender? Maybe drawing pad just for sculpting. So a couple different questions there, so I'll kind of break it down. So in our Blender preferences here, we do have a couple different options to work around some of these issues. So it's not mandatory that you have a full-size keyboard, so if you go to preferences, input, we do have a couple of things. Emulate number pads. So make the one to zero keys act like number pads, which it says it's useful for laptops. And we also have emulate three mouse button. So what that's going to do is allow you to hold alt and then left click, which will emulate a middle mouse button. So you don't have to have a three button mouse. You can use those things as well. The second part of this question is, can it be done with a drawing tablet? So yes. So if you have like a Wacom tablet, you can remap the pen keys to have a middle mouse button. And then if you're asking if drawing pad is just for sculpting, um, personally, when I'm working, I like to use my keyboard or mouse. And then whenever I'm starting to texture paint or sculpt, and then I'll pull out my tablet, my Wacom tablet. But I do know a ton of people that actually don't use a mouse at all. And they just use a Wacom tablet to drive most all of their software. And that's just kind of like how they work. So it's definitely a personal preference. And I would definitely encourage you to, to experiment. So the question here is when I rotate my sun, there are no shadows on the plane like there are in the video. So this is referring to in part one where when we were working on the Minecraft project, 
So if we check out what's happening here, if we come into our light properties and go to sun, you can see immediately right off the bat, the sun doesn't do nearly as good of a job as the point does with casting shadows. And EV essentially is not a physically accurate render, it's a real time render. And these kind of things are gonna come up a lot. So if you're having issues with the sun, I, I find it to be a bit more buggier than using the point. So I would actually recommend just sticking with the point and then as you need to, you can just increase the power you know, to mimic the, the brightness of the sun. So don't feel obligated to use the sun. Feel free to just stick with the point. It's a little bit more consistent with shadows. All right, so that wraps up the questions and comments for Blender Fast Track Volume 1. We're going to be doing more question and answers as we go. Some tips to getting your questions picked is try to keep them as broad as possible. Try to keep them software independent. Questions that apply to the broader 3D community. In the meantime, have you posted your renders on Instagram yet? I'll see you next week.